What's going on, family? Look, NOPD came a long way. And if you're not a hater, you got to give them props. From back then to what they are now, they improved a lot. Because back then, woo, and we going to touch on some of that. But first, I need y'all to share this. Comment and like. Because videos like this get hidden in the algorithm. They try not to even. You don't even get monetized. That's why people don't like doing it. Um, So it get hit in the algorithm. It don't pop up in your notifications like it should. So share it. Share it on Facebook. I don't know how to pronounce it. LinkedIn. Twitter. Thread. Just share it. You know, because it's talking about back in the days, New Orleans corruption. And like I say, if you're not a hater, you got to give it up. They came a long way. Because back in the days, if y'all want to hear stories on that, let me know. I got some stories, though. <laughs> so, oh, some, look, oh, some police, but that just was out here bad, man, for real. For real. Enjoy this, man. Share it, man. Like it. Comment. Get it up there. Don't let it get hit in notifications. Just because it's a good video, man, and it, it informed the people. Young people, how it was back then, you know? One love. In the early 1990s, the peak of NOPD's brutality and corruption, NOPD's problems draw national attention. The New York Times Magazine publishes an article in March 1996 describing the NOPD as the thinnest blue line. It notes New Orleans was the nation's homicide capital in 92 and 1994, that the NOPD solved just 37% of murders, roughly half the national average, and the federal officials estimate 10 to 15% of the force is corrupt. Look, 1994, New Orleans was the murder capital of the world, of the United States. You understand? This small city, man, I think it was like 494 murders. And it's a small city. It's not a big city at all. You know, that doesn't happen without all kinds of elements hitting. It wasn't just people decide to go out there and just murder. You had elements that produced that you know back in the early 80s the crack era people got on drugs robbing to get drugs stuff like that all that add up to that type of stuff not only that corruption like you never heard before in the police department now when you look at the police department today and you read about back then in new orleans i'm talking about you have no choice but to say man i'm glad it's not like that anymore because was, it was like, whoa. And we're going to give you a few of those stories. We just, we just talking about a few. Because this could be a 10-part series. 20-part series. The 90s. New Orleans murder capital. Onola's Notorious. Seven New Orleans police officers were indicted by a federal grand jury after an investigation of numerous charges of police brutality and other harassment. The indictment charges the seven officers, all white, with conspiracy to violate the civil rights of three black men and one white man they were questioning about the slaying of a police officer. The indictment said the officers handcuffed or tied persons in their custody to a chair struck them over the head with a large book, struck them in their chest with their fist, and bagged them. For example, placed a bag over their head and sealed it at the bottom to cut off the person's air supply. In a week after Newport's death, four people died in a hail of bullets. Three of the so-called Algiers Sevens were eventually convicted in an exhaustive trial that relied on the testimony of a fellow cop who broke ranks. Hmm. Though four citizens were dead, the conviction centered on the beating and abuse of citizens, but not on the four slayings. In April 1986, the city of New Orleans pays roughly $2.8 to settle lawsuits 
filed by citizens alleging mistreatment. Broke ranks. <laughs> Wonder what that mean. Oh, he broke the no snitch code on a fellow officer. So not just the streets have that code. But anyway, now eventually the police chief was forced out and they brought in Richard Pennington. They forced him out because, you know, they had to sacrifice someone so there won't be no racial tension. Then they brought in Richard Pennington. Now Richard Pennington was dealing with something else. He was dealing with drug dealing hitmen cops. No police department in America had a more richly deserved reputation for incompetence, corruption, and brutality than the New Orleans Police Department. In the early 90s, crime soared in New Orleans on the streets and inside the police department. Tourism plunged, property values plummeted. Finally, three years ago, the town's leading citizens decided enough was enough. The mayor brought in a new police chief, Richard Pennington. In what is being called the largest case of police corruption in the city's history, nine police officers was charged in federal court with accepting nearly $100,000 in bribes to protect a large-scale cocaine operation run by undercover FBI agents. The investigation was launched in December 1993 when 5th District Officer Lynn Davis and Sammy Williams began extorting bribes and offering protection to a drug dealer said New Orleans FBI Commander Neil Gallagher, that drug dealer turned out to be a federal informant. In the following months, the FBI orchestrated an elaborate sting and watched in amazement as Davis and Williams recruited seven other cops to protect drug shipments and guard a cocaine field warehouse on Franklin Avenue, sometimes while on duty and in uniform, Gallagher said. The drug trafficking probe was abruptly halted after Davis ordered the execution of a woman who filed a brutality complaint against him, authorities said. In 1994, Davis beat a young man in New Orleans, mistaking him for a suspect in a police officer's shooting. Groves, a 32-year-old local resident and mother of three young children, witnessed the assault and filed a complaint with the New Orleans Police Department. Davis conspired with a local drug dealer to retaliate. Hardy shot and killed her on October 14, 1994, less than one day after filing the complaint. A third man causing hid the murder weapon. Now this update for you at six, nearly 17 years in the making, a hitman hired by a former New Orleans police officer to kill a woman was sentenced to life in prison. 44-year-old Paul Hardy avoided the death penalty after a judge ruled Hardy was mentally retarded. Back in 1994, former NOPD officer Lynn Davis hired Hardy to kill Kim Groves after Groves filed a brutality complaint against Davis. Kim Groves' two children addressed the court before today's sentencing. Lynn Davis, by the way, is currently appealing a death sentence. Davis was convicted in 1996 on two federal civil rights charges for directing Hardy to murder Groves and for witness tampering. Davis also initially sentenced to death on April 26, 1996. The Fifth Circuit, however, reversed his death sentence when his conviction for witness tampering was thrown out. A second jury also chose the death penalty for Davis and he was formally sentenced to death again on October 27. 2005. Causey was convicted of federal conspiracy charges and violating Grove's civil rights. He was sentenced to life imprisonment after rejecting a plea bargain that instead would have sentenced him to prison for six to nine years. His conviction was upheld on appeal. In 2018, the city of New Orleans settled a lawsuit with Grove's three children in the sum of $1.5 million. Hmm. Lynn Davis and his blue boys, the Algiers 7. And my third story was going to be on Antoinette Franks, but I just remembered. I did a crime story on her. So when you finish watching this, if you haven't seen it, please go see it. It's very informative. I gave you a brief on it. Antoinette Franks, you know how policemen do off-duty work to make extra change? With the people, the restaurant she was working at. 
her and her boyfriend Rogers, they went in there, robbed and killed the people. A few of them was left alive and they identified them too. And that's, you know, that was part of the 90s. The 90s was something else, man. It really was, man. Listen, that small corruption of the police force, along with the streets and what was going on, it was so much money involved, man. In the 90s, you had people making $10,000 a day and up. We talking about kids, you know, to say no one did anything with the money but buy Louis Vuitton and stuff like this. It's crazy. It caused all that crime. You talking about robbing Drug dealers robbing to the support they have. You had the robbers trying to rob and kidnap the drug dealers. You had corrupt cops protecting some drug dealers and willing to do whatever for the money. It was all this was going on in the 90s. And it was serious. It was dangerous. It made New Orleans the murder capital twice. And the rest of the years, top five, like hanging on by a thread, like almost there. It was so dangerous in the 90s, man. You see how y'all could walk around with them brand new shoes and them Jordans and whatever you buy? Back then, if you wasn't somebody in the streets, like if you wasn't made, you couldn't walk around with stuff like that. You was going to get it snatched and jacked. You see how anybody can sell drugs even on the college campus? You had to be somebody hard, tough, that nobody would mess with to sell drugs. And guess what? Sometimes that didn't work. It was rough in the 90s, man. It was rough. And guess what? Everyone wanted the peace. Even a small percentage in the police department. Thank y'all for watching this episode of Nola's Notorious. Please like and share. Stay tuned. Subscribe. I'm going to upload every Monday a new episode. And sometimes in between if I get the time. One love.